WandaVision, Episode 3, Thoughts. Now, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. A couple of things about, you know, the first two episodes. At the end of Episode 2, when she says no, I really should have joked, no more beekeepers. And, let's see, there is the... Yeah, thinking more about it, I do realize, you know, the previous video, I said that it would be fine to watch the Marvel Studios logo, even if you hadn't seen Endgame. You know, now that I look closer at it, you know, there are a couple of things in there you really shouldn't see if you haven't watched, you know, including Captain America wielding Mjolnir. I really would not want someone to watch Age of Ultron knowing that Cap is worthy. It's really not going to have the same effect when, yeah. The, you know, and, and Endgame itself, you should not go into that knowing that Captain America is going to wield Mjolnir. And, yeah, really, you know, you see Tony snapping. Yeah, you shouldn't see that before watching the movie. If you see it way long before you watch it, maybe you'll forget. But if you watch it not long before watching the movie, you can pretty much figure out that he's going to die from that. And, let's see, you know, I, I, yeah, they don't say it in Infinity War that it really hurts you. You see visually on Thanos that it hurt him to snap. But in Endgame, they really say, no, it hurts you really badly. And, yeah, I, I think I said in the last video that I was not going to watch videos talking about the Easter eggs in an episode of WandaVision. If I hadn't already done a video on that episode, I have since changed my mind on that. And I think maybe the beekeeper at the end of season, episode two, sorry, episode two, is Wanda's warped visual of someone in a high-tech suit, not actually a beekeeper suit, and him coming up through a manhole is actually him walking through a hole in the force field, similar to how when the, hel you know, the helicopter then entered the force field became a toy. You know, you could more easily imagine a beekeeper coming out of a manhole than a federal agent in a tech suit walking in seemingly from out of nowhere. And meanwhile, as we see, it was still too traumatic for Wanda. Yeah, and this is where the notes for this episode begin. Very 70s opening theme and visuals. And like I mentioned before, I haven't really watched, but you know, it's, so I saw some, gotta get better at finishing sentences before I start a new one. I watched some of the videos other people have done on with, with Easter eggs and such. And so, let's see, if I can remember, they pointed out that the music sounds like, you know, and I'm not sure I remember, it's just, let's see, it was Nerdist, New Rockstars, and Screen Rant. So, you know, watch theirs, and they will talk about which shows these are from, but, let's see, yeah, so, notes that I do feel more qualified to talk about. Vision points out how sudden the pregnancy is, you know, basically overnight, and Wanda kind of grabs his knee and just squeezes it a little. And, you know, at, when I first watched it, I was just like, you know, that's a, if, if, that's a bit of a, I, I, I'm not sure how much it actually happens in real life, but it's a bit of a trope in shows where the husband isn't, you know, maybe the, the smartest person, you know, it, it's, what, what is, Simpsons summed it up in the, they, they have that, it's one of the Treehouse of Horror, I think it's the Monkey's Paw, where the, there's a Calypso song, and Homer sings, Man Smart, and March, Marge, you know, comes in with, the woman is smarter, and that's kind of, you know, the, the husband in these kinds of things thinks that he's really smart, and in reality, you know, without his wife, he wouldn't be able to run his life. So I thought it was just that she's like, don't say that because that's not good. But I forget. I just watched them, but I already forgot. It, I think maybe at least one of the videos I mentioned, the Easter egg videos, they talked about that it's maybe her using the mind control that we've seen. You know, she can, she can influence what someone is, you know, thinking. So maybe it's actually that. And honestly, I think it's really it's probably a bit of both it's yeah it's probably both really because the the you know it's not just that she 
you know, I, I saw some say that the reason that the the boss choked in the first episode was that she she was like, you know, she she had like her hands up in the air and she maybe like did the, just the little, you know, and and telekinetically made him choke on the food that was in his mouth, and you know, so so yeah, in this one it's it's both the mind control and the the trope of the the wife making sure the husband doesn't say anything, yeah. And Herb keeps cutting through the wall, even after Vision points it out. And you know, the the it's it's a great. I'm just gonna, you know, yeah. So so some of the theories I heard, it's like, and and you know, someone who's being. It's like an NPC glitching in a video game. It's like how she, you know, he's trying to go through the wall so he can escape from this reality. And it's maybe that Wanda, you know, she's like, well, it's morning, so he, Herb's going to be cutting the, 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 what's it called, bushes? Whatever. And she, like, stopped focusing on it, and so he can't change out of that, so he's still just cutting through, which is a, a really good point, because that is, in the comics, the children stop existing when she stops focusing on them, you know, so it's that sort of thing. And Vision makes an incredibly corny pun with papaya. And the pregnancy keeps going incredibly fast. And he wants the baby's name to be Billy and she wants it to be Tommy. And I like how I had forgotten, but yeah, in the comics that, yeah, those are the names of the two twins. And, you know, but, but it's, it's neat how Vision says, you know, oh yeah, Billy, like William Shakespeare, because that's what would that would appeal to someone like him, you know, something brainy. And then he quotes Shakespeare, and it's a quote about how, you know, all all the world's a stage, and the people in it merely players, which is like what the, it's, you know, WandaVision is a, a stage, and the people in it are just playing their roles that Wanda needs them to. And we see Vision speed change the diaper. I think dealing with pregnancy might also be like a, you know, a, a trope from sitcoms that are about, you know, married couples and such. But again, I haven't watched enough to say for sure. Someone did point out in one of the Easter egg videos that suddenly going into, um, suddenly having to give birth. That is a trope from from these shows, and that I've seen enough to know. Yeah, that's definitely they. You know, oh no, it's it's happening. Just to, that's it's super inconvenient, and like yeah, and yeah, and the fake contraction meant the kitchen freaked out, and the power went out for the block. So this is either Wanda due to the pregnancy, or maybe it's let, let me think. One of yeah, see, one of the twins is like a speedster, like Pietro was. The other one has some magical ability so maybe it's the the that one of the twins the i'm just going to go with magical twin because i forget if it's billy or tommy but yeah the the i really appreciate just how much magic there is in this episode because it really does make you think is wanda starting to lose control she she points out she didn't mean to make the butterflies real you know so it's like is she losing control because you know I, I wouldn't play honestly I considering I've never experienced it myself but considering when you hear people talk about pregnancy considering the pain and the just intensity and how the, just I I don't blame any woman for really getting you know yeah like getting getting angry or or, or scared or something you know but when the the woman in question has magical powers it maybe means that you know she's like spinning some of the uh what's it called the the paintings on the wall and like the yeah i already mentioned the kitchen freaking out so yeah you know i i saw that apparently this is this was the favorite of like the the critics i haven't read the the rotten tomatoes critic i i prob i i almost definitely will before i do the review and okay so what i've heard is that they've been given the first three episodes so i guess if, if i read them now it means that i won't get spoilers 
I I have not read very many prof you know, like professional critic reviews of TV shows, so I don't really know how many episodes they get to watch before the and anyway. So so yeah, you know, the the this was I heard that this was the the favorite of the three. M many critics favorite and I can see why. I really appreciate that there's this much like you know, on, on the one hand, it's the typical, like, you know, trying to hide the pregnancy, you know, but you also have, like, some very clear hints that there is something very sinister going on, that, that it's magic-related. You know, Vision comes extremely close to realizing, and actually, I guess by the end of the episode, he does genuinely believe that there is something wrong, It you know, which is basically... You know, the, in the first episode, at the end, we have, excuse me, we have something, you know, we have Arthur choking, and uh, Beth, is that uh, the wife's name? I, I forget, I'm sorry, but his, Mrs. Hart, glitching, like, continuing to stop it, and Vision saves his life. But then they just have the, the happy sitcom wrap-up of, maybe today could be our anniversary, and our song should be yakety yak and magic up the rings and the crowd goes aw and we forget almost you know the the sitcom crowd forgets but the, the those of us watching the actual show we haven't forgotten they have like memory lapses that's not a good sign that's like that's a there might be something seriously wrong that, that that's like a that's a that's a sign of certain Mental issue, like like, uh, pretty sure Alzheimer's, among others. You know that that's a pretty big one that has memory problems. So so yeah, you know that's not you you don't go oh we could just make today our anniversary. No, you go to the doctor. That's what you do. Anyway, the the but but yeah, you know so there, Vision kind of could kind of tell there was something wrong, but still you know, and then at the end of the second episode. He spots the beekeeper, and then Wanda rewinds, and both of them take it very well when everything gets, you know, color. Now, but but yeah, at the end of this episode, he doesn't really seem like he's he still believes. And I have to wonder if next episode is going to reset, or the next episode is going to be more focused on him trying to figure out what's going on. Now, he knows that Agnes and Herb know something, he knows that Geraldine basically disappeared. You know, she was in there, and now she's gone. And I, really, excellent. You know, I, I saw at least one of the Easter egg videos point out that basically at the end of the episode, she, you know, Wanda has this sort of. Huh, that's a spoiler for that. Okay, so spoilers for Rosemary's Baby. If you haven't watched that. Mute, skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. I am, I do not want to be responsible for spoiling the ending of that for someone who hasn't watched it. Okay, so I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting that you're, if you're not muting, it's because you already watched the movie. Okay, so at the end of this episode, at the end of that movie, you know, Rosemary Wanda has this kind of serene look on her face, even though there's something clear, clearly wrong, you know, so that's, yeah. No more spoilers for Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, so so the ah, what was the um, let's see. Yeah, someone else pointed out it's really nice to see Elizabeth Olsen playing the creepy aspect of Wanda, and I have to agree. I mean, we haven't seen that since like it, like for real. We we saw glimpses of it in the first two episodes, but here at the end of this episode, it's it's there and it's not really going away anymore. Like in the first two, there were these brief like when she says Vision help him. And no, those are, you know, but here we act, because if you haven't watched Age of Ultron for a while, watch it again. If, you, you know, by now your, your, your image of Wanda or your vision of Wanda is very colored by some of the later movies where she becomes much more well-adjusted. But in that movie, she is creepy as just so creepy, so creepy, you know, and like the the you know I, I want to say that Joss Whedon shot her, you know some of her footage as if you know as if she's basically in like a, a supernatural psychological horror kind of thing you know and it shows and he she plays it incredibly well like it it's 
and it's so like she you know throughout so much of the episode she's like smiling and like oh look at that twins and like and then there at the end she's just super creepy and it's just it's amazing that she manages to make it feel like the same person you know it's just different degrees of awareness of what's going on basically and yeah and vision goes through all the things that have gone against reality and they jump back in time it was like this weird little jump cut and then vision says something that goes along with what wanda wants to hear so basically she rewound again but this time it looks more like a dvd skip so her water broke and it's raining on them cute little and I, I appreciate, like, this episode really does underline, this is not, like, there's something wrong here. The, 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 I, I want to really quickly say, I don't want to take away from, if you are part of a found family, if, if, you know, there's adoption in your family or friends, that's valid. That's not, there's nothing wrong with that, that if you... You know, if you feel that your parents or your children are, you know, if, if you look at someone and say, those are my parents, those are my children, and it was adoption rather than, you know, blood relative, that's valid. There's nothing wrong with that. But in this show, there is, there is something wrong because this is not, this is not an adoption. She got preg she was like six months pregnant within 12 hours, like Vision says, you know, and, okay, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to go into a thing. I'm not going to make it a thing. I'm not going to go off on a tangent about how Vision was made to be basically the next Ultron. And I don't think that Ultron really, certainly the other bodies would seem to indicate that Ultron doesn't really care if his bodies have functioning genitalia. So I'm just going to. Just, I'm just putting it out there. I don't know how he's supposed to have impregnated her. How, you know, genitalia, functioning sperm. There's just, there's no, you know, it would be one thing if, like, the episode started and she's, like, carrying the twins and, and like, you know, we could be like, oh, they adopted. But no, they made sure to make it very clear a synthesoid and a human had babies. You know, the, the, from, from when she first started showing to her delivering the babies was, you know, well, let's see, he's got 12 hours, I guess less than 24 hours, maybe? That's, there is, that is not natural. You know, that is, that is, I'm sorry, but if we were, like, hundreds of years ago, I'm pretty sure we'd be calling it witchcraft. You know, the, the, the devil's work, this is, this is not this is not okay, and I really love that the show didn't, like, it doesn't, it, it maybe doesn't under, you know, it, it yeah, it, it underlines it in the way that every, all, all the creepy aspects so far have been underlined, by the fact that so much of the time people are taking it so well, you know, like, Geraldine comes in, oh, you're pregnant, and it's like, didn't I see you yesterday for the magic show, and... You weren't even remotely pregnant there, because let's keep in mind, this is not like, you know, a lot of sitcom episodes like, oh, and then the next week. But no, the first, you know, the se sorry, second episode ended with them coming home from the magic show. Then the beekeeper, she rewinds and she's 12, you know, 12 hours slash six months pregnant. So this is, this is not okay. You know, the, the, yeah. Another ad, another Hydra one, and I I probably did watch the Calgon to take me away ad years ago, but I could not have placed it with if not for the you know so some of the Easter egg people pointed out that's that's what that is, and it's like oh wow they you know they showed the footage of that one, showed the footage of this ad, it's like wow they really completely you know so this is actually the first ad that's almost shot for shot recreation, I guess or maybe. I, at least I didn't see anyone point to how the other two were, like, just 100%. Yeah. And she uses wind to dry them off. Considering that she's now extremely pregnant, 
you know, I, I got to wondering if this episode would still find a way to get Wanda into something sexy. Like, the first one, you know, Vision comes home with the boss and his wife, and she's wearing this lingerie thing because she's trying to seduce him, like Angus said she should. And then the second episode, the when she's, like, the, the magician's assistant, she's also... I, I quite like, I, I hadn't, you know, when, when I did the video, the, the video on the first two episodes, I had forgotten, but now that, you know, it's been pointed out, yeah, what she wore in episode two is very similar to what she wears in the comics, you know, it, it's not, not the entire thing of what she wears in the comics, but the, yeah. And anyway, but yeah, you know, if this episode did manage to find a way to get her into something sexy, maybe one of the big coats is, you know, I'm not kink shaming here. And Wanda has to hide the pregnancy, so she, you know, she puts on this ridiculous coat that's really obviously meant to hide the pregnancy, which is definitely a sitcom thing. Honestly, I think it's in some other TV shows as well. You know, the actual the actual actress gets pregnant. And the you know the the camera is only shooting, you know the the is it a spoiler? I guess technically it's a spoiler, but yeah, you know I've definitely seen it on sitcoms. I was going to give an example of a non-sitcom TV show, but there's no way for me to you know if I raise my finger and say I'm spoiling that show, you're going to know which show is anyway, and. Yeah, and Geraldine comes by, and she immediately points out that how are you not like the the temperature does not really support what you're wearing right now, you know? And then either Wanda or the Wanda twins start changing her coat, and so she has to hide so Geraldine doesn't realize that. And then the the stork wa walks in from you know the children's room, and it was you know it was painted on the wall, so now it's. You know, so, okay, so yeah, really quickly, there are several different ideas of how, you know, depending on which Easter egg video you consult. Some people think that the stork is Mephisto. I, I want to say it was Dan Casey from Nerdist who pointed out that, okay, so every animal on this show is apparently Mephisto, depending on who you ask. The, you know, you, you've got the, the bunny in episode two, Senior Scratchy, Mr. Scratch, the devil. And now the stork is the devil, and then he said, you know, oh, I guess, let's see, what's, what animal, oh, right, in, in the first episode, you know, maybe it was the lobster, you know, make, making fun of these ridiculous theories. Although, if the lobster is the devil, it's knocking on the door, it's trying to get in, I'm kidding. I don't think that they... I do think there's a chance that the bunny was the devil since it, you know, Senor Scratchy and Mr. Scratch, it, it seems a bit, but I don't think the stork is the, the devil. But anyway, one of the other theories, you know, that was one of the theories as to why Wanda can't remove the stork. Another theory was that she's, what was the, that she doesn't have full control of the, the world of WandaVision. Uh, let's see, I think feel like there was at least one more theory. I think it was basically that she just, she can't, she doesn't have full control of her powers. They, they keep getting out of her control this whole episode, you know. You know, as the, the pregnancy is, is getting weird. And yeah, I, th I think it is ba like how, excuse me, you know that like babies kick when they're in the, you know, the, the yeah. When they're in the, the mother's stomach, I think it's like kicking in the stomach, you know. And let's see. Or, or, a, or a mood swing thing, maybe, if it's Wanda herself doing it. Yeah. Anyway, so the... the I'm sorry, is that... Crap. I, I'm not always good at... Is mood swing, like, not PC? I don't mean any offense. I just... I forget what else you call that. Again, I don't honestly. There's almost nothing that a pregnant woman could do where I wouldn't be like, you know what, she's pregnant. Get off her back about it. It's an insane, like, 
the fact that we ask women to like I would if if I would 100% understand if like you know a, a bunch of women got together and developed like incubators so that you know the the you know that they don't have to carry and deliver the child I I really would not blame them one bit anyway you can kind of tell that the stork is CG I don't I don't think we're meant to be able to tell it's pretty easy to tell I don't blame them for not getting an animal wrangler because you know how precise they need it to behave uh, you know I I don't know if the the ah crap the Wanderer, I want to say, he he did like a video, like, he, he called it like Stork Rant. I don't know if he's going to catch a lot of flack for it. I'd like to try to defend him. I think he's absolutely right. It it does kind of break the, the it didn't bother me a lot. It, it bothered him more, much more than it bothered me. But I, I see what he's saying, you know, it, it really... And he, he suggested maybe it's like COVID rules, and I, I could see how that might be the case, but yeah. The, but, but yeah, also, the, the, like an animal behaving weirdly, and, and like, I've, I've seen that on at least some sitcoms. Especially, yeah, especially where there's not, the, like it's someone who's not allowed to have an animal where they're living or something like that. And probably, like, Alf, he probably did some stuff where, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's certainly reminiscent of, you know. And, let's see. But, but yeah, I, I like, you know, first it's, like, moving, it's, it's coming up on, like, the left side of Geraldine. And Wanda keeps, like, doing the thing and there's, like, you know, the, this red smoke, but it's still there, you know. And let's see. I th I think it is because she doesn't have full control of her reality warping powers yet. Her telekinesis is on point. You know, at, at most she might like lose control of it temporarily because of the the pregnancy, but the the actual like the reality warping she hasn't started doing that intentionally in a waking state yet. You know, it, it, that's that's another thing. At the end of the episode, she almost seems like under some sort of spell or in a daze or something. Because if it's just Wanda, then why doesn't she just, you know, I, I guess if she explains it to Vision, that's still gonna... But, no, I, I feel like the, the, the way that she... Yeah, I, I still think that she's under someone else's influence. Now... Yeah, and I saw at least one of the Easter egg videos say basically the twins are part of Mephisto's soul. And once they're brought into the world, he can come into the world, you know. It's a it's like a like he's he's partially trapped, but he can kind of come through. Yeah, there's a there's a movie, but that's kind of spoiling that movie. Okay, so I'm just yeah. But the, yeah, and, you know, she's like, she's holding the fruit in front of her belly as if that's going to cover, you know, it's completely ridiculous. But that's, those sitcoms, it was like, I, I think on The Nanny, they even reference it. Like they, you know, one of the, one of the characters specifically says, can you believe that sometimes sitcoms try to get away with that thing as they're trying to get away with that thing, you know? And that's not technically a spoiler. There's several different people on that show that I could be talking about. Now, let's see. The... What was she? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, she's, like, holding the, the bowl of fruit. And Geraldine's like, Wanda, how thoughtful. I would like some fruit. You know, and for a second you're like, obviously she can see, see right through this thing, you know. But And, and Wanda's, like, holding the bowl of fruit and doing the thing to try to get the stork away and finally she just throws the fruit and the stork like ran it you know and and then like Geraldine is like I heard a noise though and then Wanda's like oh was it this noise because that's like my fridge you know Wanda how fancy just yeah 
and you know and and then the stork comes up on the the right side of Geraldine and like you know first it's like at her her feet and then it starts like biting the the pants on 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 her right leg and like pulling at it a little bit and I don't know enough about storks, but I could imagine that's probably a thing. Like, it's trying to find food or just some kind of invest, you know, it's, it's, yeah. And, and Wanda em eventually manages to, actually, I forget exact, yeah, I, I don't remember exactly. Sorry, I watched the episode yesterday. I, today I watched the movie I'm going to review after this video, 187. I love how utterly unimportant what Geraldine is talking about is, you know, for most of it. And then it is really nice that she got a promotion. And, you know, it's a typical sitcom thing. At first you think, oh, she got fired, you know, even though she helped out, which, yeah. And Geraldine walks into the spare room and spots the crib. And Vision gets to the doctor and starts running back to Wanda. And... I like how you know some of the Easter egg people pointed out that as much as Wanda is trying to hide the magic, you know, Vision straight up like he ran all the way to the doctor and he runs away again. And you know, obviously the doctor realizes there's something wrong there, but the the doctor's wife also saw it. Like she's right there in the car, you know. She so there's no way she didn't see that they they moved unnaturally fast. And, and Geraldine tries to help Wanda with the baby delivery. And the delivery itself moved extremely quickly, like the pregnancy itself. And I love how neat and sterile both pregnancy and delivery are. Like, there are no unpleasant bodily fluids at all, because that wouldn't fit in the sitcom world. And, you know, by, before the end of the episode, Geraldine and the Doctor have both seen things that make it impossible for them to not realize there's something going on. And Wanda even asks Vision to, to, you know, remove the glamour so that, you know, the babies can see him as he actually looks. And Vision agrees that the baby be named Tommy, and the audience goes, aw, and I might have gone on to... And then she starts giving birth to the second twin, so he does get to name one of them Billy. Small towns, you know. So hard to escape because they are literally trapped in the suburbs. And oh, right, and one of the one of the Easter eggs, uh, Easter egg videos also said that you know we see at the end of the episode there is a real suburb of Westview, New Jersey. So you know apparently Wanda went in there and created this bubble, possibly with help, uh, with or being manipulated or something, possibly a mix of the two, and that's where it's physically going on and sword are right outside the the force field and they're very, you know the moment that Geraldine got spat out they were there with like troops and vehicles like they are very aware that they might it kind of reminded me actually just now of the when in the first avengers when we see that you know black widow was fibbing you know bruce had sorry, Dr. Banner had seen through, there were in fact other people, you know, nearby to just in case they were necessary, you know. And let's see, right, and, and someone said that, you know, maybe Wanda went to like, you know, Agatha Harkness or a, a witch and tried to get some help. And that's how, you know, and, and it went wrong or something, and they ended up with the, the reality of WandaVision. Agnes and Herb are gossiping, and Vision briefly talks to them. And at first, it just seems like, you know, suburb gossip, sitcom gossip. And Wanda says, you know, I'm a twin. I had a brother. His name was Pietro. And then she starts singing a Sokovian lullaby to the twins. He was killed by Ultron, wasn't he? And Herb and Agnes talk to Vision and they think there's something wrong with Geraldine. She has no husband and Vision's like, oh, that's 
no home and it's like oh there's you know and the yeah and and Wanda asks Geraldine to repeat about Pietro and you know and 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 for like a, a for a few seconds you know Geraldine tries to slip back in to you know says, I said you're what was a terrific you're a very strong lady Wanda would you like me to say it a third time just no what did you say it's just oh so creepy and you know and yeah others have already drawn the parallel to that it's classic twilight zone episode um it's a good life i want to say it's called you know you're a bad man you know very uh, yeah with the uh, yeah sorry for those who have no idea it's, it's the episode where like there's this kid that everyone has to appease because he has these godlike powers and he's basically become a megalomaniac you know he wants constant like everyone has to do exactly what he wants all the time or he's going to use the magic to you know screw people up and yeah she came here because what are you trying to tell me and wanda asks about what the sword pendant is and who geraldine is and Herb almost tells Vision what's going on, but Aang has stopped him. And, she, you know, one of the Easter egg videos pointed out, she said, stop it. Just like uh, Mrs. Hart said to her husband, Vision's boss, you know, it, it, in the first episode. So that's, that's how they respond when, you know, when it comes a little too close to Wanda or Vision realizing that there's something strange going on. And let's see, but but yeah, you know, very likely what Herb was about to say was we're all trapped, you know, and they realized that Geraldine, like, you know, as as my read of it is, they don't think that Geraldine is there to do something evil. They're worried what Wanda or Mephisto might do to Geraldine because she is an interloper you know it they're, they're basically thinking it's just a matter of time before wanda realizes that geraldine doesn't belong and you know there's going to be you know that's that's going to cause some problems and so let's see yeah so i guess she was lying when geraldine comes in and she says you know the my the the pipes busted in my home yeah, because she because she realized that things were going wrong in other homes around, and so she used that as an opportunity to go in there and find out some information. And you know, I some some of the Easter egg people, the videos people said that basically the the um, Geraldine thought that she had an opening when Wanda brought up Pietro. Honestly, at least at first, I read it as that basically, like, she temporarily, like, like, uh, let's see. Like, if you think of it as, like, that, you know, the, the, uh, let's see, that's a good way to put it. I saw it as when Wanda starts to realize that the the sitcom reality isn't real that enables others to also see that it isn't real but then i guess yeah i'm i'm not sure maybe maybe it's one maybe it's the other maybe it's a mix wanda where's geraldine she left honey she had to rush home which you know we've just been told geraldine has no home in westview and she, so, you know, so home is not Westview and she's rushing. It's, you know, the, the, I mean, Wanda didn't exactly say, it's not that I use telekinesis to fling her out of here. No, she just said she left. She had to rush home. I mean, that's almost true. It's, you know, it's, it's like not the whole truth, but yeah. And we get our first view in the show of the outside of the barrier as Geraldine is spat out of Westview. And something I hadn't really thought about, but one of the Easter egg video people pointed out is 
we see her wake up. She lands on the ground and then she wakes up. So maybe inside the, the, the Westview bubble, they're all asleep. And this is a, like a, a collective dream that, you know, let's see. And this is the first episode to end without the fake credits. We're only getting the real credits. Three episodes in, and we still only see the outside of the show within a show right before an episode ends. I do hope that they will change that fairly soon. Meanwhile, another episode I absolutely love. I I really love this show. This is one of my favorite shows of all time, and I'm really psyched to see what comes next. I really appreciate how much this one focused on the fact that there's something very wrong. Vision is coming closer and closer to realizing it. And in this episode, it actually kind of appeared that Agnes herself was also trapped in having to appease Wanda or whoever is responsible. You know, maybe it's not Wanda. Maybe if, if Mephisto is like the puppet master, maybe he wants the Wanda puppet to be... Or, yeah, maybe he wants Wanda to be content, but it's not actually her that has to be appeased, is what I'm saying, but... Yeah, in the first two episodes, it kind of seemed like she had more power over it, but, I mean, when I think back and I, like, try to recontextualize now that we see her looking legitimately concerned here, you know, I guess maybe she was always trying to appease Wanda, trying to make sure Wanda didn't see something that would make her freak out. It's just that at first it came across as sinister to us because we didn't realize she herself was trapped. And... When she, you know, when she used to be pushing Wanda to have kids, really she was just following either Wanda or Mephisto, what you know they wanted to happen, and yeah, I. And we did get another my husband Ralph, reference, you know, and we still haven't seen him, so it's still possible that Ralph is actually Mephisto, and let's see, the. The other thing. Let's see. Yeah, right. So Wanda straight up pushed Geraldine out of the illusion, and here at the end, it actually kind of seemed like she knew that that was what she had done, and she just wasn't telling Vision that it was. I wasn't entirely sure if she knew at the end of episode two that there was something wrong, or if the rewinding time kind of resurfaced reset her as well, but this kind of does make it seem as though she knows a little bit more than she's letting on about what's really going on, and yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, let's see, yeah, so at first Geraldine was playing along with the world that Wanda has created, and then when Wanda talked about Pietro, she basically tried probing Wanda by bringing up, not, not in the, space alien way, but, you know, probing questions. Bringing up Ultron, so I guess she was aware that she was a sword agent, or maybe when Wanda opened up about Pietro, that allowed Geraldine in the real world to take back the controls from the show control and what she was doing and saying in the first two episodes, where it really felt like everyone was adhering to the sitcom world. Geraldine even seemed confused by that at times in the second episode, such as saying she doesn't know what she's doing there, which I think was in the previously on. I hadn't quite give, realized the, the weight of that s statement before the, before it was on the previous Leon, but it's like, you know, when you, when you would watch an episode of Lost and you'd see, like, an obscure side character in the previous Leon, you'd be like, gee, I wonder if that obscure side character is gonna show up in this episode, you know, but at the same time, if we haven't seen them in forever, you do kind of have to remind people what happened last time but yeah you know the let's see i will say that the trailers told us so much that it does feel like it's moving a little slow i mean we knew from the trailers that they were going to have twins three episodes in they just now had the twins and we knew about the the bubble and we've only just now seen the outside of you know we we saw you know back then we were calling her monica rambeau but we saw her be spat out of the the bubble 
in the trailers, you know, a while back. I, I don't remember if that was months ago or exactly when, but we knew it before this episode, so, yeah. I do hope that very soon the episodes will, like, start cutting back and forth between the sitcom world and the outside world with the sword agents trying to figure out exactly what's going on and get control over it, similar to how, you know, the, the first two Thor movies would cut back and forth between Earth and the world that Thor and or his allies were at, on at the time. In in a world, on a world, anyway. Come to think of it, this was also the first episode to not have a convenient wrap-up at the end. Vision is clearly disturbed there at the end, and Wanda looks like she just did something wrong and is trying to hide that from Vision. Now, the first episode had a very traditional sitcom wrap-up that deals with, you know, the, the problems that the episode centered on, and then the second episode ended with them happy about the pregnancy and the reacting very well to the color, yeah. And, right, and some of the Easter egg videos also pointed out that, you know, she actually uses her Age of Ultron accent again. And, you know, some, some say that we haven't heard it since Age of Ultron. I think it was there some of the time in Civil War. It maybe wasn't quite as thick, but I feel like there are at least some of her line readings. I'm not saying that I feel like I remember that. I remember very specifically how she pronounced some of those lines and I would yeah I would say that that was there was at least a trace of the accent but it is true in Infinity War and Endgame there is no Sokovian accent like it's a it's a very neutral American accent in that so yeah and let's see yeah you know she used to have an accent She's Sokovian, you wanker. And, yeah, that is it for this one. But, actually, let me just really quickly make sure. Those were all of my prepared notes. I, I want to make sure that I don't forget to say something. I, uh, let's see. Mm. Right, I, I appreciate the... the you know, when we saw Dottie and her husband, you know, we saw that there was a lamp with, like, two babies, you know, like, holding it or something. As the, and, and, um, let's see, and, and they do one of those, you know, does this make me look fat jokes, and the husband is relieved and not having to answer that. Which reminds me of that episode of The Nanny where Brighton has to r remind. Ah, crap, what's his name again? I'm sorry, Miss, Mr. Sheffield. How to respond when Fran asks, uh, you know, like, how do I look? And, this and, and, and then he says, Does my butt look wider than normal? There is no right answer to that one. Let's see, the, the, um, and I do have to wonder also if they really are going to keep, you know, we've had three episodes and all three covered one decade each. You know, I have to wonder if they're eventually going to, if, if some of the future episodes will like, you know, have a have a shift between two decades at, at part of the episode. I maybe like maybe there'll be like maybe there'll be an '80s thing, and then it cuts to sword agents trying to figure out what's going on, what to do, and then when it cuts back to the show, we have a '90s thing instead. You know, or maybe there will just be. I mean, we we saw again the trailers have a clip of like going from. A black and white world to a, I think maybe to a color like Wanda like moves her arms and like the TV, like like various objects like morph into other versions of you know, and uh, yeah and I saw one of the, one of the Easter egg people video people said that there was something wrong about the, like, it, it looked, the, the home in this episode looked like the Brady Bunch home, but the stairwell was kind of wrong. I, I don't remember exactly how they described it, 
but I got, I thought back to the episode, and I was like, yeah, there is some, it's, it's just, there's something wrong there, and the, the person, you know, said, you know, at, at first it, like, bothered me, but then I realized, no, it's intentional, it's supposed to look just a little off, like, because her memory's not perfect, you know, she didn't, when she grew up watching these shows, she wasn't, like, committing them perfectly to memory, it was, it's just that now that she has a married life, this is how she always pictured it, you know. Now, let's see. I guess that might be. I, I've, I've heard a few different reactions to the, the show. Uh, you know, so, some people are really psyched about it, like I am. Other people are not as, you know, for some people, it doesn't really work, the whole sitcom thing, you know. But, yeah, I've heard of at least one person who really didn't like like it. And I think maybe something that will help, you know, if you're watching this and you're kind of losing interest and you're like, this is, this is really not what I expected from the MCU. This is too far out of the mainstream, you know, too, too far removed from what we're used to from the MCU, you know, something that you can try to focus on to, to maybe remind yourself just how messed up what we're seeing is Vision in the real world was dead last we saw him. You know, the, the there's no way that... I've, I've heard some say, you know, maybe this is set between Age of Ultron and Infinity War, but then why do they not bring up anything that happened in it that I no I I really don't see it the the pretty much this has to be taking place after the end of Endgame and he was very dead at that point you know actually yeah come to think of it holy crap he'd been dead for five years I mean I don't know what happened like if you leave you know he's not quite organic so it's not like he would rot away like a really you know I, I guess it's possible that they, you know, put his body in some kind of container. But like, don't don't electronics eventually degrade and and come apart? I, f I feel like I've heard that that's a thing. If if they aren't used for a really long time, you know. But yeah, so like best case scenario, they scoop them up and he they put him in some kind of container where he doesn't degrade over time. But that's still like. You can't change the fact that he's been dead for five years. You know, for five whole, he didn't get dusted. So for for his body, it was five years. He's been dead for five years, and now, excuse me, either she reformed him out of nothing, which means that she's literally going around and acting like this is a real person when it's literally not. Like that's one option, and another option is that she brought someone dead back to life you know that crime against nature the whole zombie thing like the undead are usually not a particularly good substitute for like finding someone else who's still alive that you might you know like this is not the kind of thing that ends well in fiction you know the the there's there's really not very many stories that involves someone bring, being brought back from the dead where it's like, oh, wow, I should have done this ages ago. This worked out perfectly. No, the either she's walking around with a corpse that's been brought back to life or she's walking around and there's no one there. Like, that's incredibly creepy. That is spine, bone-chilling, spine-tingling, horrifyingly creepy. You know, she's walking around and acting like she's with her husband when in reality there's no one there. And the, the people around her have been, like, hypnotized and are forced to act like he's actually there. You know, it's, it's yeah. Now, let's see. And that actually also, if she brought him back, like, if, if he isn't actually there, if she created something that behaves like him but isn't him you know, then either he's trying to, like, come to terms with it and trying, that's why he's picking 
holes in the sitcom reality or you know if part of him is actually her you know like yeah you know if she if she created him with her own magic maybe part of him is technically her and maybe it's her mind trying to you know figure out is this really real and that is it for this video so yeah i've been talking for almost twice as long as the episode itself but yeah absolutely loved it honestly even if they do keep going with this thing of like every episode being almost entirely a sitcom episode and only at the end will something happen i i really don't see myself like i i i can hardly imagine that i won't keep loving this i i don't know i don't know what they could possibly do in upcoming episodes to to not i mean it is the first it you know just because they've mastered making these movies doesn't mean that they'll be able to make the shows quite as good i i don't know i've i haven't heard that many like i know that some people thought that agents of shield was really boring although that was technically also that was abc that wasn't marvel studios film and show sorry you know so the the yeah the the I would I would be extremely surprised. I am just yeah. I'll I'll say that for now. I would be extremely surprised if this show, you know, down the line. I and I realize you know we're we're like only a third of the way through. There's what five or six episodes left. It's it's six I think. It's possible for them to to mess it up, but they've done such an incredible job so far that just yeah. And I do hope that if if it turns out that a lot of people lose interest with it so far, the yeah, I, I do hope that they yeah, they, they probably will learn from that. You know, they've pretty much Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, you know, when you look back at some of the earliest MCU movies, you know, they they made some minor missteps that later movies have gotten a lot better at avoiding. Now, let's see. I think. You know, among other things, for example, the, the upcoming Shang-Chi movie will actually have the, the, the Mandarin, the real Mandarin, you know, because, the, the, you know, they, they saw that people hated that the Iron Man 3 one was just an actor, and they were like, man, culpa. We're gonna we're gonna do it properly then. So I I don't think that was the plan. I think they were originally going to just have this joke character, and then you know they figured out. Yeah. Anyway, I yes. So that is it for this episode. Really really psyched for the next episode and the rest of the show, and yeah. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.